What's up guys? Crazy Crash back here with another video and today we have a highly, highly, highly requested video from a lot of people. I've had it on TikTok, people asking me to react to Mr. Drew School for Boys. Now, what's my opinion on the show? Do I like it? All these different questions. I've had a lot on YouTube, people showing a lot of curiosity. So, I promised this video back in December last year and I failed to deliver because things got in the way. I apologize, but it's here now. I'm gonna react to my bits in the show, but also a couple of other bits that I thought was memorable to put in. So, yeah, let's go. I'm just gonna react to it, and you says I'm gonna along with it and see what I think along the way. Okay, guys, so here we go. We're gonna watch it now. Um, we're just gonna watch the beginning and various parts, as I said, that I think is memorable. So let's go. Teachers today were just not there. They think themselves big bosses. But they're not really. All of them they're they're us and that's it. And that we listen and that's it. <laughs> So with that clip, that was the very first clip that um, the production team came up to our house and filmed. And they basically interviewed me, what do I think of school? And basically what's my whole like opinion on everything? And I kind of just, that wasn't put on. My parents didn't tell me to say that. A lot of people thought it was scripted, but it generally wasn't. That was me off the cuff at like 10, 11 years old. And I basically just told them, and that's why they picked me for the show. They interviewed thousands of kids across the country, but the way I was able to conduct myself and seem confident on camera, like that was just something they liked. So yeah, I was brutally honest. Like the thing that's such a big boss is because I mean, teachers tell you what to do all the time. And although it's their job and like now I realize, but back then I just used to think, let me listen to what I want to listen to. And obviously I see the error of my ways now, but I do still stand that. Uh, I think that was pretty cool from what I said. So yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> Boys aged 12 and under are almost six times more likely than girls to be kicked out of school. Leave me alone! 90% of male young offenders were excluded from school themselves. Yeah. I was excluded a few times from school, multiple times from secondary school especially. Just from I'm struggling really, a lot of kids struggle in this country and it's a big thing but this show highlights a lot of things that people like miss and misunderstand with kids suffering from ADHD and various other things so it's important to take note if you're like a parent or anything like that Dad, me. me now 11 boys whose behavior is threatening their futures are enrolling in a summer school like no other where the yeah there's a lot of fights fighting oh jesus swearing <laughs> and a total lack of respect <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was supposed to be. I thought I think it was supposed to be like a, a duck or something. I I can't remember what that was supposed to be, but just me being crackers. I'm a problem child. I, I have problems behaving. Their parents will also That clip went viral over the internet. Everyone was sharing that and tagging me in it. It still gets shared around now. It was on TikTok and everything. That was mad. I'll react to that bit later on when it actually comes up. In the classroom, forced to confront their son's behaviour. Do you think it was appropriate to tell a member of staff you wanted to smash our face in? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. To we'll get to that. Shortcomings. I'm admitting to the world here that I'm a shit mum. How do you think that makes me feel? The school will be run by inspiration. Essex head teacher Stephen Drew. Suck it up. Get on with it. You can't always have your own way. Some people look at the child who's disrupting their child's class and they almost want to write that child off at nine years old, ten years old, eleven years old. And I think it's wrong. I love it. it is. It is wrong. You know, I've said this a lot in previous YouTube videos and live streams. A lot of teachers now, they I wouldn't say they necessarily know a lot. I don't know about modern training, but when I was at school, there wasn't a lot of teachers that understood kids with ADHD. So they just wrote you off as kind of like a just a bad child, really. And although, obviously, you tell them that you have ADHD, they don't seem to let it sink in. And I, I put it down, a lot, the teachers don't put a lot of stress nowadays, you know, they have a lot of pupils and they kind of put all of their attention onto one particular student. But, you know, it is an issue that we're just overlooked and they don't really see past that we're struggling in schools really, but this show highlights a lot of that. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Failure is not an option. Draw the moustache on Mr. Drew. In the Failure is not an option. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mr. Drew and his team help these boys unlock their true potential or it's too late. So a little bit of um for this here. Unlock their true potential 
So this here, this shot is from a later episode. I might react to that if this video does well. But we did a football game and we called ourselves the Panthers and we played a local football team. And it was part of like showing where we'd come after all this time. We'd been training for it and it was symbolizing us all getting together and achieving something for us to be proud, you know. And the actual shoes that I'm wearing on that video, I still have them. And I believe I still have the kit that I played in as well. The actual shoes from the show. And I also have the medals as well. I have a few things going through that I will point out. But yeah, I have a lot of memorabilia from this show that I, I kind of stole. <laughs> it's too late. Whee! Mr. Drew's School for Boys. Music's nice. First week of the school holidays. But while their friends and classmates look forward... So, guys. Believe it or not, the voice of the narrator on this is actually Nick Frost. If you don't know Nick Frost, it's he's here on the screen right now. But yeah, Nick Frost, really cool guy. I like his movies from like Paul to um, you know Shaun of the Dead. Really funny movies. So yeah, go check him out. Um, I'm really actually. I found out years later that he actually narrated this, and uh, I was chuffed to hear that. Six weeks of freedom for eleven boys. A very different summer is on the cards. Girly here we are. Here we are all arriving. Ready to cause havoc for the next four weeks. Be their new home. Cool. Pink. Here we have my first meeting with Mr. Drew. The very first time we we locked heads, I suppose you could say. So this is going to be interesting. Clark, I'm Mr. Drew. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Brief going to my office. Here we first go. Up, it's 11-year-old Clark and his parents. You reckon you're fairly sort of balanced about school, yeah? Yeah. You don't no. sort of go there thinking, this is terrible. This is terrible. It's okay. It's terrible. Oh. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I've just been brutally honest that I hated school. He's trying to like convince me like, is there a bit of middle ground there? Do you like it a little bit? And you get frustrated by like maybe certain lessons. I'm like, nah, nope, hate it, horrible. No, no middle ground. Why? The teachers are always mouth at me. Like, rah, rah, rah. Which, you can kind of see, like, I suppose it's kind of adopted, like, terminology I, my parents and family used. Not so much my parents, but family, like, a lot, like, obviously we come from kind of just like a very old-fashioned family, you know, just tell it as it is. So when I was just like, they're just all gob, they're just all mouth, just honest, honestly, always in your ear. And I think back then I just kind of wanted my own peace of mind, let me do things at my own pace, because I like to learn, just not when I'm pushed and forced to do something. You know, it's, it's all come, coming back to me, like, how I used to think. Okay. Oh, it did, little cock. It happened. It happened. Clark lives on Wearside with Dad. Oh, man. The old house. The old house where we used to live. We've got the old TV. This is like from 2013, guys. So this one was from then. But, you know, we have the old fashioned rotary phone, swirl dial. You know, we have. The old carpet, we used to have a, an old set, there was a fish tank over here, you know, and this is my little brother Jason. Uh, I have two brothers, Jason and Jesse. Jesse was, my mum was pregnant with Jesse at this point in time, and here we are messing around, as brothers do. My dad Keith, a mechanic. And this is my dad's corner over here with all of like the business cards and stuff from car manufacturers and different things. And a Conan sword from the movie Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a replica, guys, it's not sharp, so don't worry about that. But yeah, here's my dad. All of you know him. Full time mum and Helen my mother and younger brother Jason. Yeah, I'm not hurting them guys here. It's just really funny as you can see he's laughing. And there's the Wii and the nunchucks. Awesome. I remember all this. It's amazing how much comes back to you when you look at old footage. I miss you, little bro. I miss you very much. If you're watching this, reach out to me. Guys, that's a story for another time. Sorry about that. Clark's in constant trouble at school. He's regularly removed from class and made to work in ice. So this bike right here that I'm riding is a uh, rally chopper, I believe Mark II or Mark III. My dad used to collect them. I rode it down here. They asked, they said, can we get a shot of you riding the bike? And I was like, yeah, sure. So yeah, while everyone else was riding BMXs, I was riding classic bikes. But just six weeks away from starting secondary school, he doesn't think he's the problem. Sometimes. So yeah, that's that's very true. I didn't seem to think that I was the issue. I had a teacher called Miss Boyle in primary school. 
she taught English, I believe, and she said to me, she goes, I've t taught at primary school and secondary school both. She says, you're gonna get eaten alive when you go there. They says the teachers do not mess around. They'll punish you for just doing half of the stuff of what you do here. So I was kind of worried. I was like, what am I stepping into here? It sounds like prison. So I was just like, oh no, I don't wanna go. So then obviously this opportunity came up and I was like, this might help prepare me and give me the tools I need to get through secondary school. So, ha, Miss Boyle, I made it. Ha ha, proved you wrong. The teacher, the least little thing I do, the gun. You're missing your break. I just don't think it's fair. Yeah, so right, <laughs> what a pause. Like obviously, Back in school, they used to say things like, you're losing your break, or you're not gonna be able to do this, or you're not gonna be able to do that, or detention, and then, as I said, I don't think it's fair. Is it fair that, you know, other kids would wind you up, and then when you retaliated, you were the one that got in trouble? That's what used to happen to me. And then here, we obviously have me and my brother Jason messing around. Jason is 13 now. As I say, anyone that knows Jason, reach out to me, bro. I miss you. I love you, man. But yeah, he, he's messing around. <laughs> It looks weird, but he's literally just like jumping around on my back. He's unique. And I've never met a boy like him, and everybody who meets him, terms of they've never met a boy like him. That is true. Um, a lot of adults, when I first talk to them, they say it's like talking to a, a little adult. It's like an adult in a child's body. That's what a lot of people used to say. It was the same thing over and over. It's kind of weird, obviously, now I'm growing up, but this little, this little fella is still inside. You know, he's still there, loitering around. He comes out now and then to cause trouble. But, you know, it, it was always good to feel different because that's what I used to always feel like. I was different, but in a good way. That wasn't a bad way for the reasons, you know, a lot of kids get bullied for. So, yeah. And then here, one of the famous lines as well. Sometimes I just stay in bed and relax on a school day. I stay in bed and relax on a school day. <laughs> That did not go as I planned. So these are the little sticky hands, you know, you get them in the 20 pence machines and you, you throw them in the stick and my mum did not like this, but my response is pretty snappy. Clark! What you doing? What on earth is that? I don't like to get told up because it makes us feel upset. Yeah, this is um, one of the ones where I was like, did I say that? Really? Is that me? And yeah, I did. And this is what I said. I said, it brings on your emotions a bit. I'm talking like I'm doing a, a scholar or something. Or like I'm I'm speaking a proper memorial speech or something. It's like you don't like getting shouted at, do you? It, it brings on your emotions a bit. But you can see like in my face when I'm talking, it's like I'm thinking and I'm, I'm putting things together And I think obviously that's what they saw. They saw that there was something in there, you know, and obviously clearly gave me a chance It better not be what I think it is, Clark It isn't what you think it is It better not be It's worse, it's worse than what you think it is It's than what you think it is I would describe them as sweet and sour Here we've got classic bikes here, like my dad used to own They're gone now, but at least I think, but classic bikes My, my dad was a mechanic as you hear, so if my reaction seemed a little bit dulled down than what you expect, it's literally because I had to go through this episode and find the timestamps. So I have already seen a few of these clips already, so it's like I've watched them for the second time. But also I didn't watch all of them, it was just kind of a quick quick skim. So yeah, but here my dad's talking, so. He's, when he's nice, when he's a good boy, you know, he's fantastic. When he's on his downside, you just don't really want to be around him, quite honest. So this bit right here, where I'm shouting to my mom, I want some Pepsi, is the only bit in the show that I faked, which you can tell here, there's an odd line my mom says, but basically it was just a drunk drama for the crew, like, oh, drama, we'll, we'll act just like it'll put the nail in the coffin, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them down, and basically I say I want some Pepsi, didn't even drink Pepsi then, and she goes, no, you're not getting any, and I goes, why, and she goes, it's bedtime. But as you can clearly see, it's it's daytime. <laughs> so, stupid response, really. Why don't you let it out now? Because it's bedtime. Got little Jason down here, just wondering what's going on. He probably is about five, six years old here. No, it's not. Like an estimated 5% of... Run, Forrest, run! ...children in mainstream education. Clark has been diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And his parents don't know where... So, here we have Jerry. It's my first proper pet. She was a gerbil. She lived five and a half years. I was really attached to her. So shout out to Jerry. I miss her. She's a cutie. It's a turn. She's on my head. So I used to put her on my head and she would 
scratch as if she was digging in the in the dirt, kind of what dogs will do. They'll kick kick dirt back. So that's what she's doing. She's like scratch and tickle my head, and it was it was really fun. Tell whether it's the ADHD condition that's triggering it, or is it other things? So that's a good point from my dad. That I think if if you're a kid watching this and you have ADHD, tell this to your parents. Tell them to listen to this. Because my mom used to always blame it on me just being bad, like why can't you just behave? But it's it's a bigger, much bigger story than that when you look into things. So if your child is obviously having a lot of issues, my dad used to think kind of more logically. My mom used to kind of immediately think, oh, he's just being bad, you know, punish him for it. But my dad would kind of think, well, is it him just being, you know, badly behaved? Or is it things that he can't necessarily help causing him to be this way? So my dad was a bit more lenient. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, criticised my dad for that, but I respect my dad for that because he really made life easier for me to kind of deal with things because he, he gives us some, a way to, to, like, open up, I suppose. And here uh, we see me putting underpants on my little brother Jason's head. I want to be funny and silly, but not in a bad way. Like, I like to be silly in a good way, but I always I do it in a bad way. So this is a good point I say here, I say I don't want to be silly in a bad way, I want to be silly in a good way. And obviously that was the way I kind of conveyed it at the time, but I can translate that now. Basically, what I was saying is around this time I was discovering what I'd already knew, but I wanted to be an actor and I am an actor now. But this was my way of conveying, basically, I, I, by being silly in a good way and make people laugh in a good way. I kind of want to be an entertainer. I, I wanted to, to, to put on a show and, and impress people and, and make people laugh and all these different things. You know, that, that was kind of what I was trying to convey at the time. Now I understand what I was trying to say. Here we have my old room, you know, got old teddies and my old TV. My granddad gave me this TV with the old VHS on it. I used to watch VHSs because I used to like old uh, TV shows like On the Buses and Norman Wisdom, you know, lots of different old things that were on VHS. And here we have Bunny. Still got Bunny in my room right now. Um, got me through a lot of bad nightmares when I was a kid. Kind of was very attached to Bunny. Give me an example of something you did in a lesson. All the time um, that well, led to one of your teachers well, give, give, giving it all that, as you say. In French, I don't like French because I don't see the point of it. My dad agrees with me. Uh, that look right there. I say, I don't see the point of French. My dad agrees with me. And basically, this kind of comes across very wrong on my dad. My dad's like, yeah, French doesn't matter. It wasn't that. It was more the fact of, I've never went to France. I've never wanted to live in France. And I always knew I never would. No offense to French people if you're watching this, but just never really something I had interest in. You know, my passion was in like performing and entertaining and art and things like that, not learning another language. You know, it is for some people, but for me, I didn't see the point. And my dad agreed that obviously he knew from my personality that it wasn't something I liked. And you see the death stare he gives my dad here. It is really uncanny. My dad's like, uh-oh. In French, I don't like French because I don't say the point. My dad agrees with me. Um, that look. My brain automatically thinks, right, this is silly time. So by that statement there, my brain thinks it's silly time. It's basically just me saying, like, there's a switch. Like, with me, with my ADHD, there's a switch. So one minute I can be in full concentration mode and then the next minute it just switches and my brain's like, yeah, let's go. That's what I was trying to say. And you can see, I'm just kind of like, oh, what have I just said? And my dad's just like, oh, he's really throwing me in it. And my mom's just like, oh God. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we have a clip of where we're first, we're going in our first like little lessons of the day. I think this is the first day or two we were here. Tom gets into a little scrap with uh, either Aston or Dylan, I believe it was, and they taunt him at the door, so. I thought it was just cool to mention this because Tom's come a long way now. Before the boys even make it to their first class, a fight breaks out and PE teacher Dominic Volante steps in to remove 11 year old Tom. Dominic Volante, this man here, sorry I paused you on a, <laughs> a bad moment mate. He was an amazing, he was the PE teacher down there. And he had a good accent? He was an amazing teacher. He always told you, you had a catchphrase, you say, you need to have resilience, lads. You need to have resilience. And you used to always say that everywhere he went. He says, you, you need you need that. If, if you get knocked down, you need to get back up. My accent not, but might not be perfect there, but he used to always say resilience. So he probably said resilience a million times when we were down in that four-week period. But he was a really good teacher. He always taught you how to just get back up after things knock you down and some good messages from him. Settle down. Tom... Uh, struggled a lot with his anger. He didn't really know how to like get it out properly and he would just react when anyone kind of said anything that he didn't like. And obviously we hear, see Aston or Dylan, not sure which one, you know, making Tom kick off more because they knew how to push his buttons. 
Come on. We'll go down in this direction. Take your time. Mum Christina is witnessing his behaviour at school for the first time. No, you're gonna have you're gonna have clashes. What you now the reason I put this in here is because I know there's a few kids on this channel that you know suffer with ADHD and they ask me how to deal with anger. You know, how do I deal with my anger? I just I lash out at the teachers, I tell them to, to F off or I'll storm out of the class or I get a fight, I'll throw chairs, I'll throw rubbers. And all these different things. And I put this in here because what Mr. Vlaki says is very important. Obviously, you're seeing Tom react here in this way. So it's a very important to listen to. I have to be able to do is they know to call. Don't swear. But I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be easy. But everybody here is on your team. And you've, got to, you've just got to work with us. So that's very important. So he says everyone here is on your team. I spoke to someone recently. I said, I feel like my teachers are all against me. And I said, go talk to them. They're human beings. What you've got to remember is, is they are there to do a job and they just want to get through the day as easy as possible. They don't want to have to deal with people kicking off. They don't want to have to deal with unruly kids. They're human beings. And if you talk to them and just say, listen, I'm struggling, help me out, they will help you. And the person got back and said, it actually helped a lot. Shout out to you. You know who you are. All right, here we go. So Tom's back to class and this is where we see one of the lessons. So we're in maths right now. This is Miss Skinner. She was a great maths teacher. Can't fault that. Seem to be uncontrollable. We've got eleven Sorry, guys. boys who are all deemed to be uncontrollable at school, and we're putting them all in one room and saying, "Oh, you can teach them." So yeah, I'm apprehensive. The challenge is, you're going to stick pieces of paper together, big piece, and make a giant multiplication square like that. You've got to stick. The piece Nine of the eleven boys are present and correct. <laughs> Here we see Tom with his artwork. That's what we say. That face, man. Cheeky little Tom. Here we see Tom's artwork. I always found this clip funny. Relatively speaking. Woo! But Zane and Max. This scene was quite funny. Um, I really enjoyed this bit when watching it back on telly for the first time. We have made other plans. I'm just going to sit and let you listen to this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything until it's done. Gentlemen, isn't the weather lovely? No. How is the weather not lovely, Max? Because you're making it stormy. Am I? Yeah, because you're dark. What am dark. I doing to make it stormy? Because you're a dark teacher. A dark teacher? What's a dark teacher, Max? Because of the bad and hates oh, okay. children. Hates children? Oh, dear. Yeah, making me go to bloody lessons. Ah, so in other words, I've been horrible to you and I'm a dark teacher because I've made you go to your lessons, yeah? Yes. Yeah. What you want to do is earn money. Oh, no, you're so far from the truth, Max. But really? Yeah. Uh, Max makes an okay point, I suppose. Um, you only let earn money. There are some teachers that are there, literally just for money. They don't really care about the students. But it's not many that there's not many teachers are like that. Most teachers do care about their students, and I will reinforce that fact now that I'm an adult. You just got to find the right way to get to know your teacher, I suppose. Wow. Oh, we're now going to go for insults, yeah? Because you buy loads of things. And then you eat them. <laughs> I remember that when I seen this the first time, it was like, that's why you're so fat. You buy loads of food and you eat it. <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't get over how like kind of ruthless Max was. He didn't care what he said. And Zane's just giggling here in the background. Why are you so fat? <laughs> Gentlemen, what are we going to do for the duration of this time? So we start our lesson. We're going to have a humongous poo. Are you? Okay. Good. I think it'd be better if we walked together and went back up to our classroom. James, let's take our conversation somewhere else, shall we? Let's take it over to somewhere in Australia where you oh. can't keep up with us. But we go back towards our classroom. Billy Crab! Oh, yeah. I, I really like this one. Um, this was just me in my element. I was enjoying myself, therefore I applied myself in maths. So, yeah, uh, you'll just see what they say about me. I'll just leave it. Max, do you need, um, do you need a times table sheet? Max and Zane have finally made it to class, where Clark is displaying an unexpected skill, teaching. Do 20 times 10. So, this is one of the things I struggled with in school, was writing it down on paper. 
I never liked writing it down on paper because they always would say, I don't want to see how you got it. I don't want to see the results, sorry. I want to see how you got it. Show me the multiplication. And for me, I did everything in my head. That was my way of like using a calculator. I used to always like draw on a, like a whiteboard in my head and I would solve things quite quickly, but I didn't like to write it down. So that's why I'd always get in trouble. But here, I believe Dominic was struggling with a sum. He couldn't figure out how I was figuring it out. So I showed him my method and it actually really helped him how I, you know, split sums apart in my head and obviously it's it's easy multiplication from back then but um it was a cool technique and i i showed it to him right yeah. then do seven times two right oh, two and oh, four, eight. at lunchtime dominic and clark give themselves a well-deserved pat on the back In mass, so this little badge right here, we used to get like little badges and we used to like obviously, you know, how many you had showed how good you are and it would encourage me to be better because I wanted more badges than everyone else. So this is like a little like go banana thing I believe and this was for maths and I still have this somewhere. I still have this badge because I took it, I took all the memorables home. So yeah, cool little side note. Oh, I would things that other two of the best people in the class. Yeah, and the date still has to come on. So you can see here, I think this was the first time I went vegan. I'd only been vegan for about a busy year up to this point. So uh, down here, they uh, kind of at first, this was the first few days before they got like vegan options in. I was just having uh, chips and tomato sauce, but I love that anyway. We should really enjoy our day. Yeah, it was epic. You see me there with the fountain. Mood for their next class, drama. Within <laughs> As you can see, I'm being inappropriate with a, a water bottle. I still do it now, but just not on camera. So so it's it's kind of funny. I always kind of never understood why. I always loved drama. I always used to say drama was my favorite lesson. Um, and here, for some reason, I just kind of didn't want to interact with the lesson. I'd rather mess around and I was always confused by that. But we're going to see the carnage as it unfolds, I suppose. Mark Grist. Gentlemen, come out here. Come and have a stand. Dom, standing in your own space. I'm quite used to working with difficult groups of boys. I've had boys throw chairs at me, square up with me, threaten to punch me in the face. Little shout out to Mark Grist. Uh, he has a channel on YouTube, guys, Mark Grist. He does like rapping now. He, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe he gave up teaching to pursue uh, a rap career or he was doing teaching, but with rap incorporated. So kind of like teaching kids up, um, how to do English and drama through rap. He has a YouTube channel, he's, he's pretty decent. Shout out to you, Mark, if you're here. Um, but this guy was amazing. He really like wanted to put in the effort with working with us. Like this this is what my idea of a teacher is and couldn't fault the guy. Well, well, me threatened to punch me in the face, but I tend to think just get in and just go for it really. <laughs> the more energy you put in, the more you'll get out of any lesson. First of all. True, the more you put in, the more you'll get out. Put in the effort, you get the reward. Um, here you can see me messing around, threatening someone with a water bottle to soak them. What's it? We need to have nothing in our hands. But before the class even gets underway, the teachers find themselves with a situation on their hands. And this is where things go downhill. Throwing chairs, fights, everything. We need to be, boys. Please. As you can see, that was two on one there. Uh, Aston and Dylan, obviously both brothers. I don't know which one started the fight with Tom, but then the other one obviously ganged up, and that's when things started to turn nasty. We can't, we can't teach you at the moment like this. We're going to need more adults because we cannot manage the situation that's in there. We need Mr. Drew to come in here or some kind of circus. Someone's going to end up in tears, guys. Yeah? Someone's going to end up in tears. Boys. Boys. And that was it, when I realised things had gotten out of hand, um, was when Dominic got slumped to the floor. Um, that hurt Dominic, I believe. Uh, but I don't think it's shown here, but there was chairs being thrown around. There was chairs stacked up in the corner over here somewhere. And they were getting thrown, I mean thrown around by 10 year old kids. Angry Dominic. Shout out to Dominic. Yeah, Dominic is doing good now. Yeah, he's got his own house, and he's he discovered that his dad was uh, like kind of part of the 
the gypsy traveller um, kind of family and he's adopted that um, kind of lifestyle for himself and he, uh, yeah, he's kind of like a gypsy traveller now. Um, I've spoken to him a few times. It's quite cool. Maybe I'll have him on the channel. If you guys want me to interview some of the guys, bring them on. Little maybe it's 10 minute interviews. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so as you can see, I'm soaked in water. It was very hot down there. And I'll explain later a question a lot of people ask. I'll explain it in a minute. But here we have us messing around and couldn't seem to let it go that I was in the wrong here. So I kind of just dug a hole for myself and ran off sight, I suppose. And uh, you'll, you'll hear Mr. Drew speak about that. Okay, Mark, you've chosen not to be here. Okay. Max, Mark, you've chosen. As you can see, everyone else has kind of settled down, except me and Max. They want to learn, but me and Max just refuse to give up the fight. And uh, that's why we weren't allowed to participate. You've chosen not to be in the... I love Yeah, I'm glad. I will say I was kind of in the wrong and not in the wrong here. I was in the wrong because I obviously got involved with everything, but I would say I wasn't in the wrong because I didn't start it. It was started by the other guys and I just kind of got wrapped up in the whole, I want to be part of this, I want to be part of this. 50-50 on this one. Chosen not to be in the room. Let's go. I okay. am choosing now. Uh-uh. Right, you're stopping everyone else having a lesson now. I'm not. Because they need to be able to have a lesson. You just carry on, sir. Clark will be going in a minute. It's fine. Clark. And here I go on my merry way. This is the first lesson we've really tried with the boys that is very open, very free form really. Drama by its nature, although there's structure to it, does allow for lots of running around and activity and such like. And it's a mixed bag, but actually the drama lesson is still taking place. We could easily just abandon it and we could just say, do you know what, drama, let's not do that with this boys. They can't cope, they can't do it. But actually more than half of them are. And for the five who aren't, we'll deal with that. The head teacher has not let me take part in my favourite lesson. Drama! Armor. Well, have you been doing something? Because someone flung water in my face, so I flung water back. So... Retaliation, the best option? Mm, not in most circumstances. But here I obviously thought that I was in the right here, and my mum's trying to calm it down. Shout out to my mum for staying calm here. She learned a lot of lessons down here. We all did. But my mum's my always been a great mum. Come back in. I'm not allowed to go back in. Well, can you go over there, please? Mm -hmm. Clark makes one last attempt to rejoin the lesson. Yeah, they locked the doors. I was really annoyed by that. I tried picking locks and everything. I couldn't get in. He can't get in because we've shut the doors. You're cross with me, Clark. I know you are. I know. I know. He, Helen, he's, he's digging him. Let me in! Self a massive hole and he's just digging and digging and digging. Dig a hole, dig a hole. Actually, he wants our response. Helen, just, just let him walk, Helen. Let him walk. But if you ignore them, like I've yeah. been told to ignore them, you get told you're a bad mother. But it's those... This is the thing, there's, there's a lot of mixed feeling on how to deal with kids with ADHD. Let them, don't give them the attention because they'll kind of, if you give them the attention, they'll bounce off that and bring it bigger and bigger and bigger or leave them alone. But if you leave them alone, you're being told you're just letting them run all over the place. So it's very mixed, but obviously, Mr. Drew just says he'll work himself out. Oh, isn't it? And at the moment, he, he wants an argument with everyone. He wants the shouting match. Yeah. And do you know what? If he can't get it right, then he won't take part. All right. I'll see you in a little while. Cheers. And that's the way. You know, I kind of want... I remember back then, I ran away and I wanted them to follow me. I wanted that shouting match, but um, they didn't. So I kind of just moped around bored until I decided, all right, I'm ready to, to give in the fight, I suppose. Boys, yeah, so we'll just continue yeah, here. Let's make a move. That was a nightmare. That drama session I had. So this is kind of a lot from like a teacher to say this. This is not what he says about us. Probably the most unpleasant educational experience I've ever it. had. I am. Like ever had. Uh, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, and then afterwards you're like, well... Just... You can clearly tell we tested them. We tested them all. They, they probably came here thinking like, it's going to be a bit of a hassle, but we, you know, I'm used to it, I'm a teacher. But we came here and we tested them and they felt like, you can see he's like, ever had, and he's laughing because he's like, what the heck, I've never been here before. These are like the worst kids in the country, all in the same room. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty.
pretty shocked to hear him say that. I mean, it's a title to hold. The worst drama lesson ever given. Do it again. Like, you just gotta go and do it again because the, we can't slow down. This is what he says here. You can't slow down, you just gotta go and do it. Down. Like, how we feel isn't really that important. We've just gotta do everything we can. True. So here, guys, we see me doing a runner. Um, I'm gonna try and just keep this short. The video's getting a bit long now, but uh, I'll just pop in and pop out. But this is where I clash heads with Mr. Drew for the viral clip. Clark also has a date with Mr. Drew. Clark? Wasn't interested. But the head appears to have been stood up. Don't go that way. I said, come on, you have a, a meeting with Mr. Drew, and he just said, oh. And that was it. Oh, crap. Uh, yeah. This was a common thing, climbing in trees, because I always felt like I was hiding, I was above, I was out of the way, and then you hear me, little comment after this. Technically the headmaster now is my worst enemy. Some reason or another. The face smartened up exactly truth and just accepted what I wanted to do. I you hear that? If he just smartened up his attitude and did what I wanted to do. The cheek on me, eh? Why did I get down? I don't know why I got down. Um. Yeah, we'll keep going. Eventually, Keith and Helen find their son and persuade him to face the headmaster. Good boy. He only wants to chat a chat with you. A question loads of people have asked me is why do I have no shirt on? Why am I sitting in here with my boxes pulled up with my trousers on with no shirt? And the answer to that is I went from from coming up the north, the north of England, um, where it's usually chilly, no more than 10 degrees, going down to Essex and at this point in the summer it was like 23, 25, 26 degrees down there. And I have never been a fan of heat. So I used to always have my shirt off and I would douse myself in water to keep cool. That is why my shirt was off for everyone wondering. We were having this conversation, Clark, at about 12 o'clock. Do you know what I've been saying to you? Fantastic. Brilliant. Because we've been talking after your maths lesson. Because actually, you think back on what's now happened this afternoon. Look at that cheek, cheeky little monkey face, man. Look like a great monkey. Drama lesson. I in which you behaved in that. Really... Mr. Drew, it, it wasn't... I never started all of that. You, know and you... you took me out, and not the person that started it. We should have both been taken out together. But no, just one little person goes out the room. You took me out, and not the person that started it. We should have both been taken out together. But no, just one little person was out the room. You didn't behave in the correct way at the start of the drama lesson. So I was only retaliating. It wasn't you. my fault, man. So you have no responsibility for what happened? No. No. It's not you, your fault at all? No. No. That's where we're going to have to disagree. The thing is, Clark, I know you can still hear me, so it's absolutely fine. This was the scene that went viral everywhere. Me just speaking my mind. And a lot of people said, I run, ran rings around him, you know, claimed I handled myself a lot better. And other people said, this kid deserves a smack, so make your mind up for yourself. To achieve, there you go. I'm not trying to achieve anything, Mr. Drew. Then why are you doing it? Because there's some people in this, on this planet I hate to bits. You may be one of them, you may not be. I'm not saying anything, because I don't want to get into trouble, right? You can express whatever opinion you like. Well, I'm not... This was me trying to be smart uh, back here because he's, I say, I'm, I'm not seeing if I like you, I'm not seeing if I don't want, because I don't want to get up at this college. And he says, you can express whatever opinion you like. And that's me, in my mind, I used to think everything was a game, everything was a trick. And he was trying to lure me into a trap, saying, you can express whatever opinion you like. But if I did, I would get in trouble for it. So I was like, I'm not seeing anything. Listen, because I don't want to be kicked out of this college. Ah, and there we get to the nub of the situation, to the absolute. Or this issue. Please don't use that language in my room. Sorry. It is not my intention to sit here and say, you know what, Clark, enough is enough. <laughs> At what point 
I know Clark? Do I turn around and say to your mum and dad, no, I'm sorry, we can't help your son anymore? Well, I'm not going to answer that question, Mr. Drew. I'm going to put my point in now. For the past few years, when you've kept saying, Clark, stop this, stop that, stop the other, I've just gotten fed up of it. It would be very nice, Mr. Drew, if you could just leave me alone. Yeah, it's kind of kind of cheap of me just saying leave me alone when I'm down there doing this program that I agreed to do. So yeah, you, you leave me alone on this thing I totally agreed to. If that's okay with you. No, it's not okay with me. I'm not just going to leave you alone. Is that, is that okay with you? Not to not do your job? Yeah. Okay. Because actually just leaving you alone means that you just behave in a way that stops other people from learning. Well, Isn't fair to If you don't leave me alone, else. I'm just going to get worse, Mr. Well, Trump. I don't. This is my way of trying to like twist the arm. If you don't leave me, I'm gonna get worse. You know, I'm trying to like do that thing. It's like, if you don't put out that fire, it's gonna get bigger. You know what I mean? But really, I was just kind of staying the same. Agree. The, this tone here that I'm speaking in now, yeah. it's, it's gonna, gonna get gronier and gronier and gronier. Gronier and gronier and gronier. Do you not think you People love that. We're like, whoa, go on, you tell them. Behave. Well, what did I come down here for? Do you not know? I'm a problem child. I have problems behaving. Is, is, is your part, no, it is is your there a part of that you don't understand? Okay, is there a part of that you don't understand? Huh? Do, are you dumb? Do you not understand? The cheek. I mean, come on. Come on, guys. I'm not sure where you're going with it. Clark, I'm not sure where you're going with it. You kind of see he's slightly frustrated here. Kind of like, I'm, I'm, what's, what's your point? What's your point? <laughs> Here's me thinking I'm like being really smart. And I kind of was. I'm not, I'm not denying. I feel like I was quite smart here. I don't, I don't, the bit I don't understand is where you're going with it, but okay. Clark, I come down and get help, not to be told off. Okay, Clark, I'll tell you what now. You need to understand that we will carry on doing things the way that we do them. And Clark, I won't just leave you alone because I don't think leaving you alone is the right thing to do. Clark, well, our time is, right, our well, time is done. Okay. I'll let you go off with mum and dad. Mum yeah. and dad have got some conversation Bye. to have with you later. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Bye. Thank you. Can we not talk about how, like, buff my dad is here? He's not massive, but he's in good shape here. And he's, like, 50... 54, 55 here? Something like that? No, probably about 52, 53. Something like that. Mad. Doesn't look it. Clark is one of those kids who you need... So this is Mr. Joe actually seeing through my persona. A lot of people never got me like that. And what it was, it was putting on this front to hide what was really inside. And that was a lot of loneliness, a lot of kind of being scared of not understanding, like, why am I not accepted? A lot of these things. And he's seen through that to an extent. And this is what he says, obviously, after realizing. See, sir, so because the surface can be quite amusing in some ways. It can be quite silly, but actually it's also quite destructive. He's a young man with lots to say, but it's our job to help him say. And now I'm an adult with even more to say. Varying topics, I've got opinions on everything. So yeah, not much has changed except I grew bigger. So this guy's just a little art deer. We had to draw our old parents and the parents drew the kids. Just kind of, you know, what you, you know, how do you perceive your parent, draw something funny. And I loved art, so I really enjoyed this exercise. Today's group activity is an art class, which Mr. Drew hopes will help parents and sons see each other in a new light. You would sit opposite your parent and they draw you while you draw them. It's pretty fun. Pretty cool idea. Sit opposite your mum or your mum and dad and you're going to paint either your mum or your mum and dad or you're going to paint your son or your sons. And I look forward greatly to seeing things at the end. Right, paint rock. Big ears, I think it's like. Oops. Oops, like my poops. <laughs> oh dear. <gasps> no, I can't no, look! No, 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 no. <laughs> Max, tell me about your painting of your mum. My mum is an alien! He's very cheeky. He gets up to so much mischief. And he just, to me, he is my little cheeky monkey. My mum used to call me her cheeky monkey. She said, you little monkey, whenever I did anything. I mean, I had big, big ears back then. He used to stick right out. Everyone used to call me monkey. I can't give a that. Okay. I put daddy at the top because... I'd, I know I put daddy, I know that's weird now, back then it wasn't, <laughs> but uh, you know, I tried to draw my dad's face, um, you know, I love CB, which is my initials, and his heart in the middle, a bit of a, a weird picture, but yeah, I just, whatever.
Yes, my daddy. I know he looks a bit like a zombie. Yeah? <laughs> He's got hairy chest and big muscles. And I just think it's uh, a very charming picture. Charming. A very charming picture, Cedric. Very charming. Frame it and put it on the wall in Buckingham Palace. Oh, uh, yes, well, we'll pay 50 million for it. 50 million up here in the back. <laughs> charming. It's a good word. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's he is coming. Get okay. There, you chicken shit. Oi. Language, Timothy. So here, guys, we have the final bit of the video. We're just reacting at the end now. It was just a little uh, fun water thing. You know, most of you have probably seen it before, but I thought I'd throw in the beginning and the end to close it out. So, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to do lots more reading because I've been inspired. I've been inspired. Woo! Mission accomplished. Back at school, Mr. Drew has laid on a rope. And there's this no was fun. Here you see Mr. Grist sliding. There. Here's Jason here. Yeah, he he had fun with it. Mr. Grist, the teachers had a go. It's awesome. Height restriction. Straight into the bushes. And you just watch the distance on this. Straight into the ground. It's been a busy first week at summer school. A beaver builds a tower so strong that even a brown bear can't smash it through it. Because really? it's so strong with sticks and wood. And the lessons are... Me learning. I loved nature back then. I loved animals. Nature documentaries, David Attenborough, the lot. So when we went to the library earlier in the episode, uh, Mr. Grist told us to go get some books that we each enjoyed. And then we was going to do a quiz by going through each book. And whoever remembered the most fact about the books, I had an incentive to learn because there was prizes to win. So yeah, a little backstory for that. Sink in for all the pupils. I found that when I was a kid, when I really enjoyed something, I remembered a lot. I loved movies, so I would remember all lines to movies. Like me and my friend Dan, we both love um like titanic polar express so every year we like ring each other and we would always say like pick a scene pick a scene pick a line and what comes after this and we'd like challenge each other and it was the same with this if i loved like an animal i'd learn every fact about it and remember it pretty much word for word so this was a good challenge for me at the moment i'm spending far too much time on the internet most of the time that no, wasn't like social media back then guys it was more emails YouTube, that kind of thing, and it, it sounds bad here, but it wasn't as bad as that. It was more just kind of, it wasn't 24-7, it was just like when he was on the computer, it was more kind of that was when I would want the attention. So yeah, it's just kind of a mixed message in here. Oh, wait a minute, son. Oh, 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 I, I'm coming down in a minute. I, I, I am getting, well, most of the time he's not even paying attention. My dad's like, I can't, can't argue with that. I think I need to curb that a bit. I'm just say the mystery is ending the narration here. I never get into any kind of situation with children where you think you're going to solve something overnight and there aren't going to be bumps in the road and things going wrong. But it feels very much after a day of good stuff today that these boys are in a better place and their parents are in a better place. Those kids who have got it wrong today have generally finished the day getting it right. So up and down, but remaining positive. So there we go, guys. That is the first episode of Mr. Drew School for Boys, done and dusted. Let me know what you think. A lot of people requested this. Um, if you want me to do another one, let me know. Um, shout out to my editor, Dan. He's going to put his uh, channel here, link in the description as well. All the links to the actual channel uh, that are, the episodes are on in the description. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, take care.